Hello again, listeners, and welcome back to the Learn English Elementary podcast. This is number seven in series two. My name's Ravi, and my name's Tess. We're your presenters with lots of interesting things for you to listen to today. But first of all, listeners, I have to tell you, Ravi is sitting here with a very long face. You look really upset, Ravi. Do you want to tell the listeners what's up? Tess is just teasing me because I don't like the weather today. Ravi has been complaining since he arrived at the studio. Well, I know, but really, Tess, I've had an awful journey here.、Oh. It's okay for you because you come in the car, but I come on the underground, and it is just awful when it's raining. I got wet walking to the station, and then everybody was on the train with their wet coats and wet umbrellas. I hate it. Oh come on! You can't complain about a little bit of rain. Honestly, you complain when it's too hot. You complain when it's too cold. I don't complain that much. Yeah. Well, I do a bit, but. Honestly, my trousers are wet, and I've got to wear them all day, and my feet are wet, so now they're freezing cold.、Aww. I only bought these shoes last week, and now look at them, ruined. I look ridiculous. You're such a fashion victim, Ravi. It's a podcast. No one can see your shoes. Anyway, at least it isn't cold. I'd rather have rain than be freezing cold. I wouldn't, and I'm cold now. I'd rather be cold and dry than cold and wet. Well, it's bad news for you then. The weather forecast says it's going to be like this for the next week. Really?、Mm -hmm. Nightmare. You know, I don't mind rain when I'm at home. I quite like seeing it out of the window. But when I have to go to work, no. Anyway, that journey was really stressful, but I feel better now. Seeing you always cheers me up, Tess. Ah. Shall we get on with it? What have we got today? Well, there's Rita talking about Bath. The Bath. Bath, the city. Ah, okay. And there's Daryl for the quiz. The your turn today is a big one. What's the biggest problem facing humanity today, and why? And there's Carolina too. Don't forget my joke. I wish I could. I know you enjoy them, really.、Uh... Hey, Tess. A horse goes into a bar and says, "An orange juice, please." And the barman says, "Certainly, sir." But why the long face? Ha! Get it? Long face is a horse. Is that it? Is that the joke? Oh no! You just wait for the big one. Shall we move on to? I'd like to talk about. Okay. I'd like to talk about listeners. Is the part of the podcast when someone tells us about something,、um, something that they're interested in, or something that's important to them—a person, a place, a hobby, anything really? Yes, absolutely anything. And today we've got Rita with us in the studio. Rita's twenty-one years old. That's right, isn't it, Rita? Yeah, that's right. And what do you do? I've got a shop, a small shop. I sell second-hand clothes. You know, old clothes, mostly from the 1940s and 50s. Great! I love the dress you're wearing. Is that from your shop? Yeah, this is a dress from the 50s, 1956 to be exact. I love it. It's beautiful. I love the colour. Yeah, it's lovely. Thank you. And you're going to talk to us about Bath, right? That's right. It's my hometown. Cool. It's a great place. Yeah. Um. I was born in Bath, and I don't know. I've never wanted to live anywhere else. Remember, we've got listeners from all over the world. Perhaps it's a good idea to explain where Bath is. Yes, of course. Bath is in the southwest of England, about a hundred miles from London, I guess. A couple of hours on the train. It's near Bristol. That's the biggest city in the southwest. Bath is a city. But it's quite small. I think the population's about—I、um, don't know—about ninety thousand people, probably. Okay, good. And I guess you think it's a great place to live. <laughs> it's a fantastic place to live. <laughs> great restaurants, theatres, shops, lovely old pubs, beautiful buildings, music festivals, and a fantastic nightlife. 
but it's quite quiet at the same time, if you know what I mean.、Mm. It's a safe city, and the countryside around is beautiful. Lots of great places to go at the weekend. Tell us a bit about the history. Well, I don't know a lot, but it was a Roman city、um, about two thousand years ago. The Romans liked it because of the hot springs, hot water that comes up from the ground.、Mm. It's the only place in Britain with hot springs.、Mm. The city is actually built on top of an old volcano, not active, of course. <laughs> so they built baths there, you know, public baths using the hot water. That's where the name bath comes from, of course. The Roman baths are still there. You can visit them. You can't swim, but you can drink the water. Drink it. Yes, drink it. It's good for you. It's got loads of minerals and stuff in it. What does it taste like? Absolutely disgusting. <laughs> 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 anyway, then in the 18th century, Bath became really popular. People went there for holidays, and then later Jane Austen wrote about it. She lived there for a while. If you've ever read any Jane Austen, oh yeah, Pride and Prejudice is one of my favourite books. <laughs> It's interesting, as I said, the Romans built Bath, so there's loads of Roman houses and stuff all under the city. Wow! But the archaeologists can't really explore it because they don't want to destroy the beautiful 18th-century buildings on the top.、Mm. It's a World Heritage site. And I think it's the most beautiful city in Britain. I love it. I even love the tourists. <laughs> We get loads of tourists, and you know, it makes me feel proud. I live in a city that people come miles and miles to see. Well, is there anything you don't like about Bath? No. Well, I suppose the only thing is that it's really, really difficult to park in the centre, and the traffic can be terrible. But that really isn't the end of the world, is it? Certainly not. Thanks, Rita. You've made me want to go to Bath again. I haven't been there for years. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Rita. <laughs> Thank you. I enjoyed talking about it. What about it then, Tess? A weekend away together in Bath. Hmm. Let me think about it. That was a really good idea for I'd like to talk about, wasn't it? It would be really interesting to hear about other people's hometowns. Can we put some pictures of Bath up too? Definitely. Will you do that? Okay. I'm going to have to teach you how to do it, Ravi. I know. Right. Speaking of computers, it's time for the quiz. We've got Daryl waiting to play. Hello, Daryl. Hello, Ravi. Where are you today, Daryl? I'm in Skipton in North Yorkshire. Oh, I know it. I've got an uncle who lives in Skipton. Is it raining there as much as it is here today? It's pretty wet, yeah, but I don't mind the rain. I'm going to go for a walk later with my dogs. Lucky you. Are you not working today? Not today, no. What do you do? I work at a golf course. I'm a groundsman. Okay, so what does a groundsman do? We look after the golf course, make sure the grass is okay, and all of that. It's like being a gardener. I see. Do you know anything about computers? Er,、uh, Ravi, you're not supposed to tell people what the quiz is about before we start. That's the second time you've said it. Oops. Well, let's get on with it. We're going to play hot seat, Daryl. I've got these cards with some words on them, and I'm going to give them to Tess, and she has to explain the words to you, and you have to guess what the words are. Okay? Okay. And all the words are on the same topic. And I think we all know what that is, Ravi. And the topic today is computers and computing. Computers and computing. You've got one minute, starting from now. Okay, this one is the thing you hold to move around the screen. Um, small thing. It's an animal as well. Mouse. Yes. Next one. Um, the thing you type on.、Oh, keyboard. Yes. Well done. Oh gosh.、Uh, the thing with the picture on it. Um, the screen. Monitor. Yes. 
Um, this is something on the computer that does something. Uh, sorry, that's a terrible clue. Um, you have these on your computer and they make it do things. Um, you might have one for editing photos, one for sending email. Um, I don't know. Uh, you have them on TV too. Oh, program. Okay, right. Okay, the computer and the monitor and everything are all, um, programs and things are software, but the other things are... Hardware. That's right. Ah, uh, okay, um, the little thing you move around the screen. Mouse? Uh, no, you use the mouse to move it. Uh, the little arrow or whatever, you know. Oh, the, um, I know it. Oh, what do you call it? Uh, cursor. Right. Oh, this one's a bad thing. You don't want your computer to get one of these. It makes everything go... A Trojan? A virus? A virus, yes. Um... Time's up. Oh. Well done, you two. <laughs> How many was that? Hang on. Mouse, keyboard, monitor, program, hardware, cursor, virus, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well done, Daryl. Sorry, I wasn't very good at that. That's okay, Tess. Thank you. Okay, Daryl, thanks for playing. We'll send you some bits and pieces. Enjoy your walk. Thanks, Ravi. <laughs> Bye. 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 OK, still to come, we've got your turn and we've got Carolina. And the joke. And the joke. After this... Your turn is the part of the podcast when we ask people what they think about a topic. Sometimes serious, sometimes not so serious... It's quite a serious one today because we asked people, what's the biggest problem facing humanity today and why? So let's hear what they said. I think the biggest problem facing humanity today is selfishness. Um, everybody sits around and talks about environmental issues and problems that very few people as individuals are actually prepared to give up uh, their cars or their way of life to do anything about it. I think the biggest problem is the the divide between the Western world and those of us that have have money, have wealth, have resources, and the poor people that don't have enough to live and they're starving and they have drink dirty water and, and things like that. I think we should spread the wealth more. I think the biggest problem facing humanity today is that people don't listen to each other and they don't get to know each other and to understand each other's opinions. All the people that I have met from all the different countries I've been to all want more or less the same things. They want to be happy and healthy and to be able to look after their families and get a good education for their children. And I think that war and uh, political problems and disagreements are all because we don't listen to each other and we don't try to understand each other. The biggest problem facing humanity today is climate change. It's a massive problem because I don't think people understand the effects completely and therefore will not act. That's such a big question. Um, probably the biggest thing for our futures, I think, is the environment and protecting what we have. Um, I think that uh, everybody needs to look around them and see what they can do on a very small scale to stop wasting things and to try and protect the nature we have around us before it's too late. Interesting answers. I agree with the people who talked about climate change. I think that's the biggest problem today. What about you, listeners? Write in and tell us what you think. But now it's time to find out what's happening to Carolina. 
Carolina is from Venezuela, and she's studying at Newcastle University in Britain. Yes, if you listen to the first series, you'll remember that Carolina and her boyfriend Jamie are members of a society at the university, the Conservation Society. Jamie's the society president, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. He's really into saving the environment. We should have asked him what he thought in your turn. Last time, when Carolina was at the hairdressers, remember, she said she was a bit worried about Jamie. Things weren't going very well between them. What do you think's happening? Hmm, I don't know. Let's see what happens this time. Carolina and Jamie are going on a conservation society weekend away together. I can't imagine what they do on conservation society trips. Well, let's listen and find out, Ravi. Okay. Good morning, Henry. What a nice car! Hi, Carolina. Thanks. Right, in you get.、Oh. <clears throat> Hello. Hi. Move over, Layla. Make room for Carolina. I'll stay in the middle. Oh. <laughs> Carolina, this is Layla. Hi. Hello. And that's lucky old Ivan in the front. He's got long legs. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Ivan. Right, let's get going. Have you got the map, Ivan? Yep. Right, here we go. Put some music on, Ivan. There are some CDs in the glove box. Have a route around. I can't wait to see the black grouse. The black grouse, the whisky, with a bird on the front. <laughs> No, that's <laughs> called famous grouse. Oh, the black grouse is a bird, but it's black. Yeah, the black grouse is disappearing in England. There aren't very many of them left. That's what they're trying to do at the nature reserve: save the black grouse. But what exactly are we going to do? Plant hedges. Hedges. Hedges are the lines of plants and trees that divide the fields. You know, you can have wooden or metal fences. Or you can have hedges,、ah. and the black grouse prefers hedges. So we're going to take away some of the old fences and plant new hedges. Yeah, it's really cool. We went there last year, didn't we, Jamie?、Mm. Had a great time. Oh. Ivan, there's a sign saying Brampton two miles. Don't we need to turn left before Brampton? Um, yeah, um. Just a minute.、Um, I'm not quite sure where we are.、Oh. Have we passed Denton? Ages ago. Ivan, you've got the map upside down. It isn't upside down. I've just turned it round a bit. <laughs> I can't follow a map if I don't turn it round.、Uh, why don't we stop and ask someone? Look, there's a petrol station. Pull over. You ask Carolina. You're next to the window. Ask for Hall Bank Gate. Oh, um, excuse me. Uh huh. Can you tell us the way to Hall Bank Gate, please? Hall Bank Gate.、Yes. You're miles away. Oh, yes, but are we on the right road? Uh, no, it's not this road. So, which road should we take? Uh, go back the way you came. About five miles, then take a right. Follow the signs to Milton. Thank you very much.、Mm. Oh, I'm hungry.、Mm, me too. Me too. Where did you put the sandwiches, Henry? They're in the plastic bag, in the back somewhere. Oh, oh Henry. This is a bag of rubbish. What? This bag is full of rubbish. Oh! Don't tell me. You put the bag of sandwiches in the rubbish, and put the bag of rubbish in the car. Oh no! Oh, oh well, I'm sorry. It's an easy mistake to make. Are we nearly there, Henry? Ivan? Well, I'm not quite sure where we are, to be honest. If we're on this road here, look,、oh. this yellow one. Well, we should be there by now. Oh, Ivan! Come on. 
Stop and ask someone, Henry. Excuse me. Oh yes. We're trying to get to Hallbank Gate. Is this the right way? Hallbank Gate? No, dear. This is the road to Farlam. Hallbank Gate's in the other direction. Oh, oh no. How far is it?、Uh, not far. Go back the way you came for about two miles, then turn right. Okay. There's a pub on the corner called the Old Duke. Uh huh. Then go straight on till you come to the main road, then turn right again.、Mm -hmm. You'll see the sign to Hallbank Gate. You can't miss it. Thank you very much. <sighs> well. Won't be long now.、Hmm. I just hope the black grouse appreciates what we're doing for it. That's all I can say.、Mm. Oh dear, not a very good start to the Conservation Society weekend away. I hope they find it. Mm, what a nightmare! <laughs> It's funny though. Imagine throwing away the sandwiches and bringing a bag of rubbish instead. <laughs> I hate asking for directions though. Men always hate asking for directions.、Mm. Anyway, we'll have to wait for next time to find out how the rest of the weekend goes. Hope things get better. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to tell my joke. Then I think that's it for today. Come on, then. Let's hear it. Right. There's this baby polar bear sitting on an iceberg with his mum. Oh, I love polar bears. <sighs> anyway, the baby polar bear says to his mum, "Mum, are you sure I'm a polar bear?" <laughs> so his mum says, "Yes, darling. Of course you are." And then. Mum, are you sure I'm not a brown bear? <laughs> no, dear, you're not a brown bear. Well, what about a black bear then? Maybe I'm a black bear. No, dear, you're not a black bear either. Look at your fur; it's white. <laughs> well, what about a grizzly bear, Mum? Perhaps I'm a grizzly bear then. No, dear, you're not a grizzly bear. Look, your dad's a polar bear. I'm a polar bear. Your sister's a polar bear. Of course, you're a polar bear. Mum, but am I a real polar bear? Oh. Look, I keep telling you, you're a polar bear. We're all polar bears. We all live here together in the snow. Why do you keep on asking these stupid questions? Mum. I'm freezing. <laughs> oh, polar bears are so cute. Did you see that program about them? Yeah, they are cool, aren't they? Yeah. Right, everyone. That's all we've got time for. But Tom, the teacher, will be here in a moment, so don't go away. Hi. I'm Tom. I'm here at the end of every podcast to talk about some of the language you heard in the program, and to talk about ways to help you learn English. Today, I want to talk about the phrase "I'd rather." At the beginning of the podcast, Ravi is unhappy because it's raining and his shoes are wet. Listen to what Tess says to him. Listen for "I'd rather." What does it mean? You're such a fashion victim, Ravi. It's a podcast. No one can see your shoes. Anyway, at least it isn't cold. I'd rather have rain than be freezing cold. I'd rather means the same as I prefer. Tess is saying that rain is better than cold. She prefers rainy weather to cold weather. She says. I'd rather have rain than be freezing cold. I'd rather. Can you hear the D? I'd rather. The D is a contraction of would. Instead of I would, we say I'd. Listen again to Tess and Ravi. 
Listen for I'd, and then listen for would. You're such a fashion victim, Ravi. It's a podcast. No one can see your shoes. Anyway, at least it isn't cold. I'd rather have rain than be freezing cold. I wouldn't, and I'm cold now. I'd rather be cold and dry than cold and wet. Did you hear it? Tess said, "I'd rather have rain than be freezing cold," and Ravi disagreed with her and said. I wouldn't. Now I want you to listen to Tess and Ravi one more time, but this time I want you to notice the form of the verb that comes after "I'd rather." Is it the infinitive or the ing form? Listen. Anyway, at least it isn't cold. I'd rather have rain than be freezing cold. I wouldn't, and I'm cold now. I'd rather be cold and dry than cold and wet. Yes, I'd rather is always followed by a verb, and it's always the infinitive form of the verb, but without to. I'd rather have rain, and I'd rather be cold. I'd rather is a more complicated phrase than I prefer, isn't it? But you know, as a learner. It isn't always a good idea to worry about all of the separate words in a phrase. What does rather mean? Why is it the verb without to? Why is it would? Well, sometimes it's better to learn things as a phrase and not worry about all of the questions. Make a note of the phrase and a note of what it means and how to use it in a sentence. So for. I'd rather you could write. I'd rather means the same as I prefer, but it is used differently. It always has a verb after it, and the verb is the infinitive without to. Then you can write some examples. Maybe, I'd rather have rain than cold. I'd rather stay up late than go to bed early. I'd rather eat fish than meat. And add more examples every time you see or hear the new phrase. Now that you know the phrase, you'll hear it a lot in the English that you read and listen to this week. Make a list of all the examples that you find. Now for something different. At the beginning of the quiz, Tess was a bit angry with Ravi because he told Daryl what the quiz was going to be about: computers. Listen to what Ravi says after Tess is angry with him. I see. Do you know anything about computers?、Uh... Ravi, you're not supposed to tell people what the quiz is about before we start. That's the second time you've said it. Oops. Well, let's get on with it. Did you hear it? Oops. Ravi didn't intend to say the word computers. He didn't want to say it. He made a mistake, so he said, "Oops." This word is very, very common in English. It means, "Oh dear, what a silly thing to do." Oops is informal. We only use it with people that we know well. We use "oops" when we make a mistake or when we have a small accident, when we drop something, for example. We can use "oops" when we're sorry we did something, or when we're not sorry at all, like Ravi. We also use it in informal emails. If you send someone an email but you forget to attach the document that you wanted them to see—that's something that I do all the time—you can send another email just saying "oops" with the document that you wanted to send. Everyone will understand what "oops" means. Silly me! I forgot to attach the document the first time. Now let's look at another very common word in English, about. You will hear the word about all the time, because we use it in lots of different ways. Listen to Tess asking Rita about her home city, Bath. Tell us a bit about the history. Yes, Tess uses about. As a preposition, 
we tell people about something, or we talk about something. Now listen to Rita's answer. She uses about, but not in the same way. Listen. Tell us a bit about the history. Well, I don't know a lot, but it was a Roman city、um, about two thousand years ago. Rita doesn't know exactly when Bath was a Roman city, but she has an idea. She knows it was more or less two thousand years ago. So she says, "About two thousand years ago." In this situation, "about" means more or less or approximately. Listen to another example. Rita isn't sure exactly how far Bath is from London, and she isn't sure what the population is either. Can you guess what she says? Listen. Bath is in the southwest of England, about a hundred miles from London, I guess. A couple of hours on the train. It's near Bristol. That's the biggest city in the southwest. Bath is a city. But it's quite small. I think the population's about—I、um, don't know—about ninety thousand people, probably. Did you hear the abouts? She says Bath is about a hundred miles from London, and she says the population is about ninety thousand people, probably, because she isn't sure. About is a very useful word. People use it a lot when they're giving directions. Remember Carolina and her friends on the way to the nature reserve? They got lost and had to ask for directions. Listen. So, which road should we take? Uh, go back the way you came, about five miles, then take a right. Follow the signs to Milton. The man says. Go back the way you came, about five miles, then take a right. Why don't you try and use about to mean more or less this week? Okay, I think that's enough for this week, so I'll stop now. I'll talk to you all again next time. I told you that two minutes ago. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is series two, episode number eight. I'm Ravi, and this is um. <laughs>、oh, stop it! I'm Tess, and we're your presenters. What's new with you this week, Ravi? Not much, not much. I'm thinking about my holidays, though. I can't decide where to go. Really? You're going to Scotland, aren't you? With Chris? Well, yeah, I was going to.、Ooh. Sorry, listeners. Chris is a good friend of mine, and we were planning to go on holiday together.、Mm. No, bad news. Chris has broken his leg, so we can't go to Scotland. How did he break his leg? He fell off his bike. Oh. Hey, Tess. What should you do if you break your leg in two places? I don't know. Don't go back to those two places. So anyway. <sighs> so, <laughs> what are your plans now? Well, that's the thing. I'm not sure. I'm thinking of going to Barcelona, but oh, fantastic! Have you ever been there? I love Spain. No, I haven't. I've heard it's pretty cool, though. You've been to Barcelona, then? Yeah, I went there when I was a student. We had a great time. We did kind of a tour of Spain. We went to Barcelona, then to Zaragoza, then Valencia, and then all the way down to Granada. Oh, Granada's fantastic! You'd love it. Sounds great, but you know, Tess, when I go on holiday, I just want to stay in one place. I don't want to be catching trains and all that. I want to relax. Do you know what I mean?、Mm, well, there's loads of things to do in Barcelona. The nightlife's great. There are lots of good clothes shops for you. I think you'd really like it. How far is it from the beach? Well, I don't think you go to Barcelona to go to the beach, but I think it's pretty easy to get to the beach. You could probably go to the beach for a day trip, then go out in the city in the evening. Hmm. Right. I think I've decided. I'm going to go to Barcelona. <laughs> great. I love deciding where to go. 
I can start to get excited about my holidays now. Well, before you do that, tell us what we've got today for the podcast. OK, then. Let's get started. We've got the quiz, as usual. We've got a problem for Carolina and her friends. We've got your turn, about talent. I might have a joke for you. <sighs> Lots of stuff. But to start with, we've got Tim. Hello, Tim. Hi, Ravi. Hi, Tim. Hello, Tess. Tim is here for our regular I'd like to talk about section. This is where someone comes into the studio to talk about something that's important to them. A place, a person, a thing, a hobby. It could be anything. Anything that's important to our guest. So, Tim, what are you going to tell us about? I'd like to talk about fell running, Ravi. What running? Fell running. It's kind of... A fell is a kind of hill, isn't it? They call hills fells in the Lake District. Yeah, that's right. And in other parts of the north of England, too. But you can go fell running all over the country, really. So, fell running is running up hills, right? I don't like the sound of it already. <laughs> well, yes, kind of. It's a bit more than just running up hills, though. It's running in the countryside, through beautiful, open, mountain scenery, and finding your way, and, and being prepared for the countryside, and the weather, and... But, yes, there is usually a lot of running uphill. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get started? Oh, sorry, how did I get started, or how did fell running get started? Well, um, how did you get started first of all, but I'd like to hear how fell running started too. Well, uh, people in the countryside have been running up hills for hundreds of years. For fun, for competition, just to see who was fastest, you know. Mm. Then in the 19th century it got a bit more organised, and people used to race for money, and... Oh, sorry, you said, how did I get started? <laughs> That's OK. Carry on. You can tell us how you got started in a moment. Right. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, uh, yes, people used to race for money and people would gamble on it. Gambling? Really? Like betting on horses? Yeah, people used to bet a lot of money on it. Anyway, lots of the fell races now were started more than a 100 years ago. Hmm. For most of the 20th century, though, there were two separate kinds of fell runners – Professionals, who got paid for running, and amateurs, who didn't get paid. But you don't get paid, do you? How did you start fell running? <laughs> no, I I'm not good enough to get paid for it. Oh. I just do it because I enjoy it. See, I I'd always liked running, but only on roads and things. Then four years ago, I moved to the Lake District. Oh, lucky you. It's beautiful. We've talked about the Lake District in the podcast before. We should tell new listeners that it's in the northwest of England. Anyway, go on. Well, uh, the Lake District is kind of the home of fell running in Britain. And like you say, the scenery is so beautiful. Mm. I met some people who were fell runners and I started going out for a run with them. It just seemed like a, a fantastic way to see the countryside. I mean, it was quite hard at first. It's quite hard work running up hills and, you know, usually there isn't a road or a path or anything, so it can be very wet and dirty and in winter it can be freezing cold and... Hang on. It's cold, wet, dirty. Sounds like loads of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It, it's not always cold and the thing is the views from the top of the mountains are so great that you don't mind getting cold and wet. It's so great to be out in the countryside without carrying a big backpack or anything, and you can just go wherever you want to. You just feel really free. And really fit. Oh, it sounds like really hard work. Well, yes, it's, it's great exercise too. A great way to keep fit and spend time in the countryside. That's why I love it. You make it sound really nice. Great. Thanks, Tim. Hmm. Nice, Tess? I'm not sure it sounds nice. Sounds a bit crazy to me. <sighs> but yeah, I can see why you enjoy it, Tim. Thanks for that. That's OK. Are you going to try it, Ravi? Want to come for a run? Um, no thanks. Football and video games is enough exercise for me. Oh, Ravi. Listeners, if you'd like to tell us about what you do to keep fit, why not write it down or record it? Got any fell running pictures we can put up, Tim? Um, yeah, I'm sure I can find some. Great. Thanks.
Now, Ravi, you're going to like this next one. It's quiz time, and we're going to talk to Lydia. Hello, Lydia. Hi. Where are you calling from, Lydia? I'm in Bournemouth, on the south coast. I know it. What's the weather like in Bournemouth today? Really nice, actually. It's sunny. Great. Are you going to go out and enjoy the sunshine? No, unfortunately. I have to go to work later. Oh, okay. Where do you work? I work in a hotel. I'm a waitress at the moment. Okay. Well, enjoy the rest of the morning. Are you ready to play hot seat? Yep. Okay then. I've got these cards with words on them. They're all on the same topic, and I'm going to give the cards to Ravi, and he'll explain them to you. You have to guess as many words as you can in a minute. Okay? Okay, I get it. Ready, Ravi? Ready and waiting, Tess. Okay then. Here are the cards. And especially for you, Ravi, the topic today is holidays. Are you ready for some holiday words, Lydia? I think so. Then let's go. Ravi, you've got one minute, starting from now. Oh,、uh, hi, Lydia.、Uh, the first one,、um, the document,、uh, the little book you need to go to another country. I always nearly forget it with your photograph in it. Passport. That's it.、Uh, next one.、Um, oh,、uh, this is what you do on the beach.、Um, Ice cream. Eh? No.、Um, oh, lying in the sun. You can't say sun, Ravi. Shh. On the beach, Lydia. Just lying there, reading a book or whatever. I love it. Tess hates it. Trying to get a suntan. Sunbathing. Okay.、Uh, now, oh, another thing you do on holiday in a city, looking at the um, oh, no, um, ugh, visiting the famous places in a city or something like in London, you'd go to Big Ben and Buckingham Palace and the London Eye and. Is it sightseeing? It is. Well done.、Um, how long have we got? Okay. Right.、Uh, oh, this is what you do before you go on holiday、uh, when you put all your clothes and things in your suitcase. Pack. Right. Next one.、Uh, oh, this is something you wear to. T-shirt. Hang on.、Uh, something you wear to keep the sun out of your eyes. Oh, sunglasses. Yes. Now,、um, oh, if you go sightseeing, you have a book to tell you what's what, and it tells you where to stay and where to go and restaurants and things. Is it guidebook? It is.、Uh, next one. Oh. Time's up. Well done, Lydia. Let's see how many that was.、Um, passport, sunbathing. I'll let you have sunbathing.、Oh. Um, passport, sunbathing, sightseeing, pack, sunglasses, guidebook. Six. Is that all? I thought we did more than that. Well, you said sun in sunbathing and book in guidebook, but I'll let you have six, Ravi. You can't explain guidebook without saying book. <sighs> Anyway, well done, Lydia. Thanks for playing. Thanks. We'll send you something. Have a good day at work. Thanks. I will. Bye, Bye Lydia. Lydia. Bye. Let's move on now. Your turn, Carolina and、uh, Ravi's joke. Yep.、Oh, all coming up after this. Your turn is the part of the podcast where we ask people what they think about a topic. Sometimes it's a serious question, sometimes not so serious, but there are always some interesting opinions. This time, the question is, what talent would you like to have? Let's hear what people said. I would love to be able to dance very well, to dance all the styles, not just sort of disco dancing, to be able to actually do. Prof- More professional dancing,、um, but I think I'd, I've got a long way to go from the stage I'm at now. I'd have to take a lot of lessons,、um, but I think it would be fun. I would like to be, be、uh, much better at some sort of sport like tennis, and you know, play for my country or win an Olympic gold medal. I would like to have the talent of playing the piano because I think it's a very Difficult 
talent to learn. Um, you have to, you know, look at the score, the music score, and then you have to control your right hand, and at, at the same time, you have to control your left hand, and also your feet have to step on the pedals. And it's actually about um, controlling your different parts of your body at the same time, and so I think it's super difficult to do so. And I admire people who have this ability. And I just think that uh, now I am an adult and it is um, very difficult for an adult to learn this ability. And I didn't learn it when I was little. So I hope I have this ability now. I'd like to be able to fly an aeroplane. Because I would feel very free up in the skies, and I can fly to wherever I like. I'd love to be able to sing, and then I'd go on something like X Factor. I think it's an amazing journey, and uh, if you win, which I would, because I'd have the amazing talent, I'd get a million pounds and be a friend of Simon Cowell. Yes, if um, I'm given a chance, I would like to have the talent to be able to stand in front of large crowds and to move the crowd to a positive agenda, for example, moving their hearts, you know, so that they could uh, mobilize their resources to give to a good cause, for example, uh, giving money to the poor in other countries or to mobilize them to to do the right things in their countries, to fight for the right cause. And what do you think, Ravi? Well, it's difficult, isn't it, when you're already so talented to think of something? Oh, I knew you'd say that. Yeah, only joking. I don't know, really. I wish I could speak a foreign language really well. Maybe that's the talent I'd like to have. Yeah, that's a good one. We're interested to hear what you think, too. Why not send us an email or a recording and give us your opinion? Now, though, we're going to hear from Carolina again. Carolina is a student from Venezuela who's come to Britain to study at Newcastle University. In every podcast, we find out a little about what she's been doing. Last time we listened, Carolina and Jamie, her boyfriend, and some other friends were going to the countryside to do some conservation work. They were planting hedges, the small trees between fields, to help protect a kind of bird. The black grouse. Yeah, that's it, the black grouse. Anyway, they got lost, but found the place in the end. Let's see what happened next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jamie, that was really funny. You always make me laugh. <laughs> oh, good. I can see the car. I'm exhausted. Mm. I've never worked so hard in my life. Every part of my body hurts. All my muscles. Even my teeth hurt. I don't think you've got muscles in your teeth, Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm looking forward to getting home and a nice hot shower mm. and then down the pub for a couple of pints. You, uh, fancy that, Layla? A drink a bit later tonight? Oh, yes. That would be great. You're very quiet, Carolina. Didn't you enjoy it? What? Oh, yes, yes, I enjoyed it. I'm just a bit tired, that's all. Uh-oh. Henry, look at the car. What? Oh, no. I don't believe it. What's happened? Look. Someone's crashed into the car. Look. Oh, no. But there aren't any other cars here. This is the only car in the car park. Oh, they didn't stop, Ivan. Someone crashed into the car and drove off. <coughs> what a <coughs> thing to do. Did they leave a note? Uh, on the car, I mean. Maybe they left their phone number or something. No. Nothing. I can't see a piece of paper or anything. Oh, God. What am I going to do? Is it okay to drive? Will it go? I think so. But look, the light's broken. Oh, no. 
and the sides all smashed in. Oh. oh God, it's going to cost a fortune. What about your insurance? Oh, I I don't know. I don't know who the other person is. I don't know if my insurance will pay. What if they don't believe me? Well, we have to phone the police. You have to report the accident, Henry. Then the police will give you a paper for your insurance. That's a good idea. Phone nine nine nine, or one one two. Nine 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 or one one two. Which is it? Nine 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 or one one two? Either. They both work. No, I don't think so. Nine 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 and one one two are emergency numbers, aren't they? This isn't an emergency. Ha! <laughs> But we need to call the police. So. No, Layla. Carolina's right. We can't phone an emergency number. So what's the number then? I don't know. I don't know where we are. That's no surprise, Ivan. I mean, I don't know which police force we should phone. They've all got different numbers, haven't they? Oh God! Wait a minute. I've got a number for the Newcastle police on my phone. Did you notice we aren't in Newcastle? I know. Where is the number?、Uh, they gave it to us at the university. They had a session for the foreign students about police and ambulances and things.、Uh, here it is. O three four five six O four three O four three. But we aren't in Newcastle. I know that, Leila. But we can phone them, tell them where we are, and ask them what number we should phone. Brilliant. Well, go on then. Phone them, Carolina. Oh, oh no, I don't want to. Can't one of you do it? I might not understand what they say. I'll do it. What's the number? Ah,、uh, o three four five six. Mhm. O four three, o four three. Hmm. Oh, hello. Um, someone has crashed into our car in a car park. They didn't stop or leave a note or anything.、Uh, my name's Jamie, Jamie Lawrence. But um, it's not my car. Um, look, the thing is, we're not in Newcastle, but we want to know the number of the local police. Can you give it to us? Where are we? Geltsdale Nature Reserve Car Park, near Hallbank Gate. Um, we're in the car park at Geltsdale Nature Reserve, near Hallbank Gate. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Oh, someone, get ready to write it down, quick. I haven't got any paper. No, I've got a pen somewhere. Okay, hang on a minute. Just a minute. O eight four five three three O O two four seven. Thanks. Did one of you get that? O eight four five three three O O two four seven. I keyed it into my phone. Okay. Yes. Yes, we'll do that. Thank you very much. Phew. Right, you can do the next one, Henry. It's your car. Right.、Uh, can I borrow your phone?、Mm. What's the number again, Carolina? O eight four five three three O O two four seven. Hello. Um. Yes, I, I want to report an accident. Um. My name's Henry Miller. We're in the car park at the Geltsdale Nature Reserve. I'm sorry. Oh no, no, no! No one's hurt. Well, someone has crashed into my car in the car park, and they didn't stop or leave a note or anything. And the car's smashed in the side, and the light's broken, and we don't know if it will drive. And we haven't. Well, that's a pain. Good job, Carolina had that number. Do you know the non-emergency number for the police? No, I don't think so. I don't think I've ever called the police. Have you? No, don't think so. But I'll tell you what. There's a police dog in my joke today. Okay, come on then. Right. 
A man's driving down the road when he sees a sign at the side of the road that says, Talking dog for sale, ten pounds.、Mm -hmm. Well, he thinks to himself, A talking dog? Hmm, sounds interesting. So he stops the car and knocks on the door, and a man answers, Um, I saw the advertisement for the talking dog. Yeah, he's in the back garden. <laughs> Go and talk to him if you want. It's a bit strange, you know. But he goes into the garden, and there's a big dog sitting there, looking quite sad. The man looks at the dog, and the dog looks at him, and says, Please buy me, sir. He's a terrible owner. He never takes me for a walk. He buys me the cheapest dog food. He doesn't know what a special dog I am.、Aww. I used to be a police dog, you know. I did some very dangerous work for the government that I can't really talk about. There are lots of stories I could tell you. Well, the man thinks, this is fantastic. And he goes back to the house to talk to the owner. I'll buy him, he says. But a talking dog? It's amazing. Why is he only ten pounds? Because, says the owner, I'm sick of his lies. He never tells the truth. <laughs>、oh, I'd love to have a talking dog. Actually, a talking cat would be better. All a dog would say is, I love you. Can you give me some food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right, that's all we've got time for today, but Tom the teacher will be here in a minute, so don't go away. Remember, you can write to us at learnenglishpodcast at britishcouncil.org. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Tom. At the end of every podcast, I talk about some of the language you heard in the program, and I hope talk about ways you can improve your English. I'd like to start today by looking at the verb think. Listen to something Tess said to Ravi about Barcelona. Well, there's loads of things to do in Barcelona. The nightlife's great. There are lots of good clothes shops for you. I think you'd really like it. Tess said, "I think you'd really like it." She's giving her opinion. So that's one way we can use think to give our opinion. Now listen to something Ravi said a little bit after that. Hmm. Right. I think I've decided. I'm going to go to Barcelona. <laughs> Ravi says, "I think I've decided." He's saying what his decision is about his holiday. That's another way we often use think to tell people our decisions. Did you notice that in the examples we've just heard, both Tess and Ravi used think in the present simple tense? When we use think to talk about our opinions or decisions, we don't use progressive tenses. You might call them continuous tenses. Same thing. Listen to another example from the podcast. Well, I don't think you go to Barcelona to go to the beach, but I think it's pretty easy to get to the beach. Tess was giving her opinion, and she used think twice. The interesting thing is that if we use think to talk about a negative idea, we usually make think negative, not the other verb. Listen to Tess again. Well, I don't think you go to Barcelona to go to the beach, but I think it's pretty easy to get to the beach. She says, "I don't think you go to Barcelona to go to the beach." She doesn't say, "I think you don't go to Barcelona." We make think negative. In the Carolina section, we heard Henry say, "I think so." Listen. I think so, but look, the light's broken. I think so is a common expression, and just like Tess said, "I don't think you go." The negative of "I think so" is "I don't think so." If you think something is not true, listen out for it in other podcasts.
Now, I want you to listen to one more thing about think. Listen to Ravi. Well, that's the thing. I'm not sure. I'm thinking of going to Barcelona, but now that time Ravi did use the present progressive tense with think. He said, "I'm thinking of going to Barcelona." So, what's the rule? We've already said that when we use think to talk about our opinions or decisions, we can't use a progressive tense. But when we use think to talk about our plans or our ideas or what's in our head just at this moment, then we can use the progressive. Ravi's talking about a plan, so he says, "I'm thinking of going to Barcelona." Listen to another example. Not much, not much. I'm thinking about my holidays, though. I can't decide where to go. Again, Ravi isn't giving his opinion. He's talking about what's in his head at the moment, so he uses the present progressive. Right. I think it's time to move on to the next thing I want to talk about. Listen to the words that were in the quiz in this podcast. Time's up. Well done, Lydia. Let's see how many that was.、Um, passport, sunbathing. I'll let you have sunbathing.、Oh. Um, passport, sunbathing, sightseeing, pack, sunglasses, guidebook. Six. Did you notice anything about some of the words? Four of them were what we call compound words: sunbathing, sightseeing, sunglasses, guidebook. Compound words are words that are made up of two words put together. So, sunglasses are glasses you wear in the sun. A guidebook is a book that you use as a guide. Sightseeing means seeing the sights. There are lots of these compound words in English, and they're useful for learners because you can usually work out the meaning. If you know what glasses are and you know what sun is. You can guess what sunglasses are. It's a good idea to keep these words together in your vocabulary notebook: sunglasses, sunbathing, sun hat, sun cream, and so on. Be careful, though. Sometimes it's one word, sometimes it's two words, and sometimes it has a hyphen. You need to remember how to write each new compound word you learn. Now. Usually, each time I talk to you, I tell you something from the podcast that you can try to use in your English. This time, though, I want to talk about something for you not to try for yourself. When Carolina and her friends were at the nature reserve, someone drove into Henry's car, then drove away. Listen to Henry's reaction. Look. Someone's crashed into the car. Look! Oh no! But there aren't any other cars here. This is the only car in the car park. Oh, they didn't stop, Ivan. Someone crashed into the car and drove off. <coughs> What a <coughs> thing to do! Henry was quite upset, and he used two words we had to beep out. You can guess what kinds of words they were, though. I'm sure. We call these kinds of words swear words, and like most languages, English has several of them. You might know some of them already. My advice to people who are learning English, though, is don't try to use swear words in English. Some words are very strong, and people will be upset to hear you use them, and it's difficult to know which words are worse. Some people will think a word is okay, but other people might be very upset to hear you use it. The safest thing is to try to not use swear words at all. If you do want something to try this week, how about this? Okay then, I've got these cards with words on them. They're all on the same topic, and I'm going to give the cards to Ravi, and he'll explain them to you. You have to guess as many words as you can in a minute, okay? Okay, I get it. Lydia said, "I get it."
she understood the rules of the game. So, I get it just means, yes, I understand.